Welcome to VCU and the Stuart C. Siegel Center. Today it's Kennesaw State. The Owls coming to take on the VCU Rams in a huge non-conference matchup between these two sides. Black and gold all around the gym tonight for Kennesaw State and VCU. I'm Joe Deck. Ed Nixon is going to be with me today. And we're expecting a good game here in the non-conference showdown between these two sides. Kennesaw State out of the Atlantic Sun. They're taking on a very good VCU team here out of the A-10. Absolutely. Uh, Kennesaw State has a lot of shooters. They have a lot of experience. And they're definitely coming in this game thinking they can win this game. It'll be interesting to see here as we take a look at the players to watch here for Kennesaw State. You can see there Chris Youngblood scoring a team-high 17 points in his last game against the Campbell Camels. Yes. Youngblood leads the Kennesaw State in scoring, averaging 16 a game. And he can give it to you any way you like it. However, he likes to shoot it from three. And on the flip side, you take a look at VCU. They're going to be going to Brandon Johns, leading the team at 14 points a game, shooting over 50% from the field. He's been such a huge player for the Rams so far. Yes, Brandon Johns has played a great role for VCU. It has changed a little bit since Ace Baldwin has went out of the lineup. However, he's Mr. Versatile. He can do it outside, inside, and all around. We get ready to look at the CarMax keys to the game here. Let's take a look at Kennesaw State. Kennesaw State, they have to make VCU play half-court basketball. Uh, VCU has been struggling lately uh, as of that, so they have to keep them in, in that and, and limit their transition points. Uh, turn, over, turn, uh, turn your defense into offense. VCU was averaging 17 turnovers a game. If you look at VCU's previous game against Memphis, they were able to score 24-plus points off turnovers. Taking a look at the VCU keys to the game. They have to defend a three-point line and limit the turnovers, and they should be fine. All right, those were the CarMax keys to the game. CarMax, home of the 30-day money-back guarantee. Schmidt, Joe Deck and Ed Nixon with you as we get ready for tip-off. The starters have been announced. Should be a good one here. Kennesaw State, we had time to talk to the SID who was telling us, you know, with them being such a new program in Division One, they're expecting, you know, top four finish for the Owls. Absolutely, and they have all the players and the coaching ability to do so. Uh, the Owls are very... Uh, very deep in their in their in their roster, and they're, they're very experienced as well. So they have a great chance of doing that. So Demond Robinson, and then of course you have Terrell Burden, Chris Youngblood, Brandon Stroud, and Spencer Rogers. The starting five for the Owls and for VCU, they're going to go to Jameer Watkins, Zeb Jackson, Jalen Deloach, and then it'll be Jaden Nunn and Brandon Johns Jr., the transfer from Michigan. Having a big year for the VCU Rams already. He'll be hoping to build on that today and see if VCU can snag another win here at home and improve their record to 4-2. and two. Kennesaw State currently at 4-2, and two, VCU 3-2. and two. And I believe that uh, Brandon Johns is going to be a focal point for VCU offensively. To get, get him the ball early, get him some easy shots. And then work the offense through him, get the, get the ball uh, hopping around the perimeter. Uh, just an inside-out game. See the difference in the lineup. Kennesaw State going with four guards. VCU going with three forwards. Kind of tells you which team is going to be banking on the glass here today as Kennesaw State will win the tip-off, and it goes over to Terrell Burden. And Terrell Burden is a very good point guard. He likes to pass first, and he's improved his three-point shooting. Burden here he is on the drive. Driving to the basket, misses. They do get the offensive rebound, and... Looks like Robinson is fouled on his way back up, so he'll head to the line for two shots. Now called on Watkins. It'll be his first. And Kennesaw State is going to do that all night. They're going to try to crash the glass and be more physical than VCU for 40 minutes. Demond Robinson makes his first. Senior from Montgomery, Alabama, has another one coming on the way. He'll make the second. Free throws have been one of the weak points for Kennesaw State, but two for two, their first time at the line. And now we can see VCU's offense for the first time tonight. Jaden Nunn trying to feed it to Watkins, but it's stolen away. Burden sails in and gets the two-handed slam. And just like the keys of the game were to take care of the ball, that is not the offensive possession that VCU wants to open up the game with. Just a careless pass. 4-0 now, Kennesaw State to open this ball game. Another pass that was a little dangerous does find Johns, and now Johns 
spinning in the paint, going up hard, and getting the two points. Brandon Johns had to earn those two points, but he got them. And that's one of the things about Brandon Johns that I really enjoy to watch is his patience when he gets the ball. Now a travel and a turnover for Kennesaw State. You can see both teams going to really try to press the other and force turnovers. Each team with a turnover. Kennesaw State converted in the fast break. It's a dead ball turnover for the Rams here, though. And I think both teams have a different approach to getting their turnovers. VCU wants to press you, make traps uh, in the, in the, in the backcourt and try to get some, some live ball turnovers where Kennesaw State is really going to pressure the half-court the half passes and make sure that you, you're, you're nice and crisp. If not, they're going to be off to the races. That ball was kicked out of bounds, so possession stays with VCU. Watkins will inbound on the far sideline. Kennesaw State up 4-2 to two here. The Loach over to Johns. Now we'll see Zeb Jackson driving inside. Stops, turnaround, fadeaway jumper. Almost in. Was halfway down, but rattles out. And the rebound goes to Robinson. Slapped away. Possession stays with the Owls. Now Youngblood will inbound. Youngblood, of course, a key returner. 16 points per game so far this year, shooting 50% from the field. Absolutely. And he, they're going to need all 16 of those points, if not more, if they want to pull out a win this game. Youngblood with it on the wing. He'll go inside to Robinson. Robinson trying to back down to Loach. Turn around. Floater is good. And that's four points for DeMond Robinson. And that is a big kid. <laughs> DeMond Robinson is a big kid. Uh, Deloach is going to have his hands full down on the block trying to guard him. Well, Deloach has the ball now. He'll give it up to Nunn. Moving toward the top of the key. Watkins going baseline. BCU just... Trying to find an open man. Shot clock down to six. Running out of time. Driving the basket is Jackson. Jackson is blocked by Robinson. Kennesaw State gets it before the shot clock goes off, so they'll try to move it in transition quickly. Burden into the corner. Youngblood's three. Nothing but the bottom of the net. And the Kennesaw State Owls extend their early lead nine to two. And that is what Kennesaw State wants to do. They want to get easy looks at the three-point line because they can really light it up. They have four guys, four or five guys that shoot the, shoot the percentage over 40% from the three. John's thought about it, then feeds it inside to the Loach. It goes off his knee and out of bounds. It's another turnover for VCU. See our first substitutions of the day. VCU will bring in Kern Jr. into the contest. And we'll also see David Schreiber transfer from Hartford. And we spoke about Nick Kern off air in regards to his energy that he brought last season. Let's see if he can do the same thing or get the same thing going this season. Nunn slaps that one out of bounds. Possession staying with Kennesaw State. Kennesaw State has made their last three shots from the field. We've seen only one three-pointer, but as you alluded to, Ed, that's going to be kind of their bread and butter if they can get it. That one right through the wickets in a turnover as he was looking for Spencer Rogers. And again, like you said, uh, they're going to be looking for a three-point shot. DCU has to do a great job of contesting the three without just letting them blow by because then that's going to collapse the defense, which is going to end up being a three anyway, too. Rams trying to end a scoring drought here. Three ball from Shriver. Good off the wing. That was a deep three from David Shriver. And that's a good sign for Shriver. I think he struggled to shoot the ball against Memphis uh, the previous game. Going up for an alley-oop, but it's taken away. Turnover, and the Rams maybe moving in transition. Taken away. None was looking for Jackson. Youngblood with the steal. Behind the back move to the basket. And Youngblood has five. And that's two turnovers for Jaden Nunn. Both uncharacteristic, however, silly, pla silly passes across the court in the middle of transition. Finds Kern. Kern trying to dribble through a couple owls. Puts up a shot. No good. Tipped. Going out of bounds. Possession will stay with VCU.
Long inbound to Schreiber. Back into the hands of Jackson, who's driving baseline, kicks it out. Schreiber wants another three on the wing. This one is off the side of the rim and no good. Owls get the rebound as it's corralled by Rogers. But if I'm VCU, I, I like that offensive possession. They move the ball, got a good shot, a good look for the shooter. Good steal. And getting bumped and losing possession with Stroud. Here comes VCU. Nunn flying in, gets it, and the foul. Jaden Nunn quickly in transition with his first points of the day. And that is what VCU wants out of that basket. 11 to 7. We'll be back with more college basketball after this. Here is a look at the Kennesaw State head coach, Amir Abdul Rahim. In his fifth season at Kennesaw State, trying to build this Owls program in the Atlantic Sun Conference. Of course, soon they'll be moving over to Conference USA. The joys of conference realignment is every few years checking to make sure <laughs> schools are still in those conferences. Absolutely. And uh, Coach is doing a really good job of putting this team together and making them competitive um, that they're even able to have the opportunity to, to, to transfer a conference. No, I was going to say, it's, they haven't been a D1 program for very long. They transferred, they moved up from Division II where they had a lot of success. Now it's Division I program, but we will have none at the free throw line here for VCU trying to convert a three-point play the old-fashioned way. That foul was on, called on Rogers. The senior picked up his first. None off the mark on the free throw. So it will stay 11-7. And none has shot the ball okay from the free throw line, but not quite where he used to be uh, this uh, this way last year. Because the ball was tipped there by none, it's not a backcourt violation. But the shot clock will be running down. Youngblood driving inside now, rejected. Couldn't tell if that was Kearns or Johns that got the block, but now we'll see quickly in transition a foul. That will send Banks to the line. And I, I think that was Kern. Um, but again, I think that is the type of play that Nick Kern brings to the VCU team. He has the ability and the athleticism to guard the best player. And even if he's beat a little bit, he still can contest at the rim. Good job by Kern. Foul going to be called on Jennings for the Owls, his first. Banks has free throws on the way here as VCU tries to cut into the deficit. First free throw is good for Josh Banks, the junior from Charlotte, North Carolina. And I tell you what, I like to give a lot of love to Josh Banks for sticking in there. There's been times where he's been buried at the end of the bench, but whenever his number is called, he produces as he knocks down the second free throw. Well, making free throws will get you more playing time. Two for two from the line. 11 to 9, inbound into Burden, and you can see VCU starting to ratchet up the pressure here maybe a little too much pressure that time <laughs> as Shriver picks up a foul on the backcourt first foul on Shriver but they have the giant banners and the flag when the team comes out that says Havoc lives here of course VCU made famous for the Havoc that got them a final four run in their history back that was back in the CAA days now in the A-10 though still a very competitive defense with uh ranked in the top 35 seemingly every season. Absolutely. Absolutely. There is one that I think the official might have saved for Kennesaw <laughs> State as it bounces off his leg. Burden now makes a move on Nunn, puts up a wild shot, won't fall. And now we will see the Rams with Kern pulling in the rebound. Nunn going straight to the basket. He's fouled on his way up. So he'll have two more opportunities from the strike. And one thing I noticed about this game so far that is going to be troublesome for Kennesaw State. If they expect Burton to be the only one to handle this pressure, the second half is going to be really tough for him. Because VCU is going to throw multiple guys at him 94 feet. And eventually those legs are going to go. Uh, that's, you know, something you talk about. And that's one of the strong suits for this VCU team is their depth and the ability of everybody buying into playing tight pressure and intense pressure the whole way. As we see the first free throw for Nunn go in this time. Got one more on the way. But that, that plays into that havoc and that, that culture here that VCU has of being able to keep pressure and really 
put a lot of pressure and, no pun intended here, but burden on <laughs> the opponents. Absolutely. None will miss the second free throw. And there is none. He'll pick up a foul trying to get the ball back for the Rams. And after picking up the foul, he'll head to the bench, and we'll see Zeb Jackson back into the game. And one thing about VCU's guards is no matter when they sub in or sub out, you're always going to deal with somebody who can truly handle some pressure and, and apply some pressure to the, to the opposing team. Burden misses a three. Rebound is pulled in by Fermin. One of the freshmen here on this VCU team. Seven new players on this VCU team this season. And this is the early sighting for Furman. Work around. We see Jackson looking. Three ball on the way. Off the mark. Tipped around. Loose ball will finally be pulled in by Youngblood. Going into the corner, Stroud's three, good in the corner. He knocks it down, his first points of the day. Great pass, and if you don't know, when you drive baseline, there has to be offensive player drifting to the corner. That's the, that's the outlet. Great catch and shoot. So Kern under pressure. He gets a screen to try to free him up a little bit. He'll find Banks, and now Shriver has it. DCU has the shot clock running down under 10 seconds. Jackson will drive, kick it out to Kern, who's now going inside. Finds space and won't get too many layups much more easier than that for the St. Louis native. <laughs> Weaved his way through traffic, but then it was clear sailing right when he got to the basket. Absolutely. And that's one of the things uh, moving the ball will do for you. Robinson turnaround jumper no good. And there we see the rebound pulled in by Fermin, and now that's going to be a charge whistled against VCU. It's going to be on Kern. A little bit out of control there for Nick Kern. But sometimes you got to live with the aggression. When you have a guy who's been, who's been struggling with being, being aggressive, you got to live with the, the mistakes that come with it. Now, Kennesaw State will get to inbound. See Cottle with it. Long throw. The Owls offense has some new faces in here at this point, trying to weather the storm. Robinson, one of the starters, though, trying to bang down low with Deloach, who has checked back in for VCU. The clock is running down. Shot will not get off. It's smacked out of bounds. So Kennesaw State does have possession, but only two seconds left on that shot clock. And great defensive possession by, B by VCU. Starting from the press, forced them, sped them up and forced them into a dangerous pass. And this was able to match up out of the press and contest at the end. And that one's going to be a shot clock violation. So there it is. VCU's defense forcing another turnover. Just a two-point game here with about 12 minutes and 11 seconds. And there's a look at Mike Rhodes, the head coach at VCU. He's kind of filling in here after Shaka Smart, which is one of the coaches that, you know, led VCU on those runs to the Final Four. But Mike Rhodes making a name for himself here as well in his fifth season as that one is tossed out of bounds. And it looks like they're going to say it was not tipped. So we will take step aside. It's Kennesaw State 14, VCU 12. Back here at the Siegel Center. And while maybe not the start VCU had hoped for, Ed, to start this ball game, it's kind of about winning, splitting the game into quarters and winning each period. And in between the breaks, VCU able to shave off three points in the deficit. Absolutely. is doing a lot of good things. Um, doing a lot of things well. However, they still ha are having uh, trouble with taking care of the ball and not turning it over. Uh, but once they get that situation under control, I think they'll be better off on the offensive end, which will limit Kennesaw State's opportunities to get breakout points. You mentioned the turnovers. 17 turnovers a game is a little bit on the high side for VCU, uncharacteristic. They have got their hands full here with Kennesaw State, who is forcing turnovers early. 
So far in the ballgame, there's been five VCU turnovers, but also five for the Owls. Robinson battling down low on DeLogis. He backs him down. Turnaround in the paint is good for Robinson. He's having a good game so far. He's got six. Absolutely. He's using his physicality against DeLogis and basically just bully him under the basket and getting where he wants to go. Eventually, VCU is going to have to try something different as far as maybe even a double or making a switch. Jackson's going to move toward the inside, kick it back out to Nunn. Nunn trying to create space, steps back, long two, no good. Whistle and a foul, that's going to be called on Johns over the back. And VCU is getting a lot of, doing a lot of perimeter orient, orientated stuff right now. I would like to see them get the ball into uh, Brandon Johns and see what he can do there, down there on the post. Trying to guard the inbound after losing possession. Run back in the ball game. Where he will be trying to suffocate the Owls. Almost forcing a turnover in the half court line there, but the ball does find Cottle, and now the Owls with a little more space and time. Driving into the basket, tough shot, won't fall for Kennesaw State's number 22, Spencer Rogers. And now VCU wasting no time trying to move in transition, but that is ended. Johns now finds a teammate. Passing it around beautifully. Three in the corner. Just can't get it to go down for Zeb Jackson. Great ball movement. Great execution on the offensive end. But just couldn't uh, finish this. Finish with the shot. Cottle over to Robinson. Robinson down low again. This time it's no good. Loose ball. Corral by Robinson. Goes up. Oh. Too strong on the slam attempt. No good. And now VCU going baseline. Jackson. Over to Watkins. Three ball from the wing. Too strong from Johns. He'll get the rebound, though. And now Watkins battling with Robinson. No. Second chance. Also halfway down and comes out. <laughs> this is becoming fun to, <laughs> becoming fun to watch. Everybody's competing at such a high level right now that the easy shots you're used to making aren't falling. Three. Deep three. Rims out, no good for Jennings. I'm gonna say, I mean, Watkins <laughs> and Robinson on each end of the floor probably felt like easy two, <laughs> and the ball just does not go down. Now a foul called as Cottle was running into none there, so that foul on Cottle will be his first. And Ed, as a former player, when you go up for a dunk like that, and it does it go in? What is that? Does that hang with you in your psyche for a little bit? Or is that something that at this level you just have to shake off and forget about? You have to have a short-term memory when it comes to, to plays like that. Of course, you hate to have them, but in the moment you have to forget it. But after the game, you're definitely going to remember it and shake your, <laughs> <laughs> shake your head. I'm sure your teammates are going to remind you too. <laughs> Jackson trying to find a way in. Kern now with the ball. He'll find none. Kennesaw State keeping the ball outside the three-point line. That shot from Jackson is no good. And it'll be Spencer Rogers. And a turnover just that fast. Yeah, Rogers was looking for burden, but a little bit of miscommunication, and it's out of bounds. VCU does force the turnover. So a little bit of miscommunication there for the Owls. No harm ends up being done for VCU. What do the Rams have in store here as the shot clock winds down under nine minutes to go in the first half? Nunn gets the mid-range jumper. And Jay Nunn has a really good knack for that, that mid-range jumper. It's like his bread and butter. That one goes in. We'll see... A three in the corner. That one rims out for Youngblood. You see the calls from the official. Looks like it's going to stay here with Kennesaw State. And Mike Rhodes is livid on the sidelines right now because VCU is blowing the coverage coming out of the press where they're giving wide open shots to three-point shooters. Where you're supposed to stunt and get back. BC was fully committing and giving up those shots where Kennesaw State can make them pay if they can continue to get those looks. That's true. That miss three is not characteristic of the Owls so far. They are one of their last eight from the field, including a three-minute drought 
Ball is tipped up in the air by none. Kennesaw State still has it. Burden now will find young blood. It's off his fingertips, and Kennesaw State maybe just needs to take a breath, but they don't have too much time to work with here on the shot clock. Three in the corner. Off the back iron. Loose ball is out of bounds and will stay with Kennesaw State. Maybe a couple Rams battling for the same rebound there between LaWall and Kern. Absolutely, but you got to love the energy. That was a great possession outside of not getting the rebound. And down to Peterson, and now Rogers has it. Into the corner, Stroud rattles home a long two, says the official. Five points for Stroud. Flip was on the line, though, so VCU has Shriver from the wing. He gets fouled. That is one of those fouls that Stroud is asking a question, but that's going to be frustrating for the coach, Amir Abdul Rahim, fouling a three point shot. We'll take a break. We'll be back with more college basketball between Kennesaw State and VCU. Let's take another look at that long two. You see Rogers kicking out to Stroud here, and you see here, watch the feet. Ooh, looks like that right or left foot, excuse me, right on the line, Ed. Kevin Duranto. That's what I like to call it. <laughs> <laughs> and then Stroud, he's featured in the last two plays, picks up the foul, fouling Shriver on a long three attempt. And that's just unacceptable uh, for a defender. That's, that wasn't a great shot by Stryver. I know he's a great shooter. However, you just got to contest and live with the results right there. And we'll see Shriver go to line for three shots. Again, he's a transfer from Hartford. Philip High, West Virginia. Four-point deficit for VCU. But they could cut it to one here if Shriver can make all his free throws. Makes the first. The pressures of shooting free throws when you're, you know, I, when you're a three-point shooter, everyone expects you to make your free throws <laughs> all the time. Well, and of course here, with it being a home game, too, you can hear a pin drop here in the Seagull Center, which is not <laughs> normally the case. They'll make two out of three. Normally a very loud environment here in Richmond, but when you're the home team and you're at the free throw line, it's uncharacteristically <laughs> quiet for those free throws. Burden finds Stroud going into the corner to Rogers, and he'll find Stroud again as he didn't catch that one cleanly. Stroud from the wing. Stroud hits another three. He's made two threes and a long two. And that was great offense by Kennesaw State and a breakdown defensively on the screens by VCU. Nunn picks up a screen, has a path to the basket, but it ends up being denied by Youngblood. Now the ball's loose, bouncing around. Shriver, thinking about a three, decides against it, and now he's going to need help. Picked up his dribble, and there is help in the form of Nick Kern. None is going to be fouled. We'll see who the foul gets called on. It's going to be called on Peterson. That's his second. And if I'm Jaden, I'm going to try to get Peterson in every ball screen that I can. Yeah, Peterson from Virginia, the lone player from Virginia on this Kennesaw State roster from Tappahannock. Feeding it inside to Johns. Johns being double teamed, and he is going to be fouled. That was on Robinson. And like I saw from Kennesaw State in their previous game against Appalachian State, when they have a when the opposing team has a post threat, they like to double and double fast. Uh, so Brandon Johns is going to have to do a good job of seeing that double come and anticipating it and getting the ball out of there to get the offense uh, moving. One and one for VCU here as that was the seventh team foul on Kennesaw State. Makes the first. He'll have another one. And as you're touching on there, Ed, it's, you know, Brandon Johns was our player to watch for VCU. It's going to be crucial for him to make these free throws. 
especially if Kennesaw State's going to crash in on that double team every time. Absolutely. Makes both here. Four points for Brandon Johns. Now let's see if VCU can figure this press out to where they're not giving the three-point shooters open looks. We'll find Burden. 21-18, the Owls of Kennesaw State ahead. Youngblood almost had a three there in the corner. Robinson trying to back down Johns, and there's another three. This one from Jennings, no good. Shriver pulls in the rebound. And granted, that was a miss, but they're getting the same similar looks. There is a three. That one won't fall. Rebound does go to Johns. Johns battling with Robinson. Feeds it inside. Couldn't get the basket in front of it. Banks was battling down low. Couldn't win that battle. And now Burden will kick it out for another three. This one is good from Kaysen Jennings. And this is probably the fourth or fifth time they've got a wide open look from this right corner. 24-18. Banks has it again, now finds Kern. Kern going inside, trying to create space, and I think, yep, he's going to get called for that push off with the forearm. Created a little too much space. Take another look here in the corner three. Jennings missed one that was almost in the exact same spot the possession before, but doesn't miss the second time down. Absolutely. And as you can see in that replay, Kennesaw State was able to push the pressure, draw the, the defense in from the corner, just leaving the, the three-point shooter wide open. Easy catch and shoot. Without long, Kern was his second, so he'll step out. We'll see Banks step out as well. And we'll see Fats Billups, freshman from Verina High School. Heard a little cheer coming up from the fan section here in Richmond, Virginia. And now Burden, while he's being double teamed, will find Stroud and now Jennings. Robinson was calling for it for a second, but Phillips does recover and finds him in the paint. Poked away and... Kennesaw right. State, Robinson wisely not picking that up until after it went across that fort line, but almost ran out of time on the shot clock. VCU will get the ball. Whistle. No shot. Foul on the floor. It's going to be one and one either way, but foul is on Burden. Terrell Burden picking up his first. And if you listen to the fans, they're getting kind of restless with, with, this, with, the, defense, with the defensive effort by VCU. And I think it's just mental mistakes, small mental mistakes, and Kennesaw State is doing a good job of making them pay for each mistake. None heads to the line for a one and one. Rattles home the first shot. Sophomore from Flint, Michigan, has six points, averages 8.4 points per game. He's very close to that average here in the first half. And while Ace Baldwin is out, I think that he's going to have to up the ante in that regard. The v VCU is going to be looking for a guard that has some experience to do that. And none is the guy for the job. And you mentioned Ace Baldwin, the junior from Baltimore, Maryland, out with an injury, is one of the key players for this VCU team. They do expect him in a few weeks back, probably right around the time conference play gets ready to start. And there is a hip check called by the official in front of us. Much to the chagrin of the VCU <laughs> faithful. One and one now for Kennesaw State. That foul was called on Fats Phillips. DC fans really don't like him picking up fouls. <laughs> <laughs> Jennings does make the first free throw. Another one on the way. Kennesaw State has led the entire first half so far. Absolutely. It has been a competitive game. However, Kennesaw State has played the cleaner, the cleaner game of the two. Jennings two for two from the line. Keeps the perfect percentage for Kennesaw State at that free throw line. And now VCU. Number five minutes to go here in the first half. Down six. As you said, Ed, been a very competitive game. Wire to wire. Shriver. Can't get that one to fall, and the rebound is pulled in by Stroud. 
and though I like Shriver being able to shoot that shot, I believe he could have got that shot later in the shot in the shot clock. Move the ball, get some inside out uh, with the rhythm going, and then you take that shot. VCU's defense does force a miss. None is going to be fouled. Say there's, you would think there's got to be a whistle there on somebody as. Nunn was trying to drive baseline. He lowered his shoulders. Just a question of who was going to get the foul. Looks like Jennings will pick up the call. That's his second. Let's see here. That's a close one. That's a bang bang play. Um, VCU uh, pretty fortunate to get that call. I'll say it looked like Nunn had his arm extended as well, and that's the appeal that we were seeing from Jennings. Doesn't win the appeal with the officials, so Nunn. Back at the line for a one-and-one. One. This is the ninth team foul on Kennesaw State. So after this, VC will be shooting two free throws for the final 419. Nunn making his work at the free throw line. And VCU has, excuse me, VCU has struggled at the free throw line in previous games, but today they're off to a good start. Yeah, nine for 12 so far. That one's going to be off the mark. We yep. jinxed it. Broadcaster <laughs> 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 jinx there as... See Stroud moving up the floor now, driving the basket. He's fouled. And that one's going to be called on Deloach. It will. That's Deloach's first. And in that position, you like Deloach just to square up and keep his hands high and don't pick up the ticky tack foul. Try to make the finish to score over him. Um, however, Stroud goes to the line for two. Yeah. As the game has gone on, we've seen fewer turnovers. Here in that first portion of the game, if you if you split the game into quarters, that first quarter, tons of turnovers. Here in this closing moments of the first half, both teams have been more careful with the ball as Stroud misses his first free throw. Brandon Stroud leads the team in rebounds with 7.3 boards per game, 9.2 points per game. He's got eight already. He'll miss both free throws. It's not wow. exactly what Kennesaw State was hoping <laughs> for at the line there. Not at all. As they drop back into what looks to be a 1-3-1 one, one zone. Going inside. Deloach turn around in the paint. Comes up short. Stroud pulls in the board. Stroud retreats toward that left-hand corner. And now we'll find Burden. Burden calling for a screen. He'll just run by. And have to hand it off to Youngblood. We haven't called his name too often today. Gets a tough shot to fall over the outstretched arms of Fats Billups. And on cue, he makes his presence known. Seven points for Chris Youngblood. But a quiet seven points for him. Johns kicks it to Nunn. Nunn's three off the mark, and the rebound is pulled in by Stroud. Foul going to be called on VCU. We're going to step aside. It's a seven-point advantage for the Owls. We'll be back at the free throw line when we come back. Back here at the Siegel Center, and as I mentioned, at that first or the second break, Ed, VCU chipped away in that first one. Well, the last two in between breaks, they've fallen further behind, and that's because they haven't had a field goal in the last six minutes of game time. Kennesaw State's defense has really caused problems for VCU. Absolutely. Uh, they switched into this 1-3-1 one, one zone, which is throwing VCU for a loop right now. They're staying perimeter orientated, and they're not getting any penetration into the zone, which is actually removing all the offensive rebound opportunities they have. Um, so they have to figure that out. And also, we're not getting enough stops. Excuse me, VCU's not getting enough stops to, uh, to get in transition, get, get their transition game going. Stroud at the line for a one and one. He'll make the first. That foul ended up being called on none. It was his first. Stroud already matching his season average here in the first half. Has a chance to end this half in double figures if he makes this free throw. And he will. So the junior from Atlanta, Georgia with 10 here in the first half for Kennesaw State. Counts for a third of the Owls offense. And Kennesaw State back to a man-to-man. -man. Phillips over to Nunn. Nunn drawing a foul on Youngblood, his first. And he walks back to the line for two. 
That's true. Tenth team foul on Kennesaw State. So two free throws for both teams now from here on out for the final 251. And somehow this game went from being a track meet to now a free throw shooting contest. Well, both teams have kind of struggled in that regard. I mean, VCU shooting 68.5% from the line, 63% for the Owls on the season. None rattles both home this time, though. Puts him in double figures for the first half. Yeah, 10 of VCU's 23. With six of those coming from the free throw line. Stroud to the wing here in front of us. Burden has it. Burden driving in on Nunn. Gets a tough layup to go in. Heavily contested by Jaden Nunn. And if you're a defender, VCU has a rule. No middle drives. And he broke the cardinal rule right there by letting Burden get to the middle. Driver finds Billups. Billups picks up his dribble. Feeds it to Nunn on the wing. Gets a screen from Deloach. And now he'll pull up just beyond the elbow and rattle home a jumper. Jaden Nunn starting to heat up. That ends a 6 minute and 40 second drought from the field for VCU. And Nunn's doing his job right now. He's, he's getting, getting the game going. Uh, he's shooting the mid-range well. Playing good defense. He needs somebody to come along and help him out. Robinson creating space on Deloach. We'll find Stroud. Stroud now moving toward the basket. Whistle and a foul. It's going to be called on Jalen Deloach, sophomore from Savannah, Georgia. Picks up his second personal. See Stroud head back to the line. Stroud so far, two for four from the charity strike. Misses the first here. And for him to be such a good three-point shooter, he seems to be struggling from the line. And we spoke about the pressures of that. 32-25 the score. Kennesaw State with the second free throw attempt. Rims out from Stroud as well. So he was 0 for 2, 2 for 2, now 0 for 2 again. <laughs> Seems to be feast or famine from the line so far today for Brandon Stroud. None under pressure does find a teammate in Jackson. Shriver from the wing. No. So after knocking down his first, has missed the rest of his threes. Absolutely. And there's the young blood in the corner. Going to have to keep an eye on that. Robinson being pushed around by Deloche. Whoa! Very Difficult pass, but you got to give uh, you got to give the low some credit. He's down there fighting for his life. Robinson definitely has. We've seen him back to race down a couple times and burden with a rainmaker that will fall. Six points for Terrell Burden, and that was a sweet spin move. Sam Jackson to Jaden Nunn, and back to the zone. Kennesaw State goes. They'll draw a foul as Jackson was moving toward the baseline. So we'll see Zeb Jackson head to the line for two shots. Stroud picks up his second. That might be the good news if you can get Stroud, Peterson, or Jennings to pick up a foul early in the second half. That'd be three for them. And maybe you, with foul trouble, you send some of these problems to the bench. Absolutely. Jackson misses his first free throw, though, and as we mentioned, both of these teams struggling from the free throw line on the season, and you're starting to see that as the game unfolds here. Absolutely. Kennesaw State down to 60% from the line, and now 70% from the free throw line for VCU. It'll improve here as Jackson makes his second. First point of the day for Zeb Jackson. Another Michigan transfer. Now, if I'm Kennesaw State, I, I do want to hold the ball for the last shot. I don't want to give VCU any opportunity to put any more points on the board. Yeah, Kennesaw State already with that eight-point advantage. And they will call timeout to talk about it. As head coach Amir Abdul-Rahim 
Graduate from Southeast Louisiana in his fifth season at Kennesaw State. Sees his Owls up 34-26 here with 15 seconds to go in the half. And Ed, what do you think they're talking about here on this possession? What do you, who do you think they're trying to set up? Well, I'm going to get some type of pick and roll action with Burden. And I'm going to have Stroud in the corner, preferably this right-hand corner right here because we seem to have a lot of success of finding the shooters in these corners. And we're just going to live with whatever we get from there. That's true. He's been very good. And, of course, another option that, again, you look down at the statue and you're like, oh, seven points, that's a pretty good half. But it's been a quiet seven points for the junior, Chris Youngblood, as he has contributed but not been the shining star here today for Kennesaw State, which I'm sure <laughs> Youngblood and head coach Abdul Rahim will also take. And that's been Stroud, the guy you're trying to draw this play up for, and I, I don't think you're wrong in that. But he's not in the game not right the game, now. So we won't see him. We also see Youngblood inbounding, so maybe something to get the ball back to Youngblood. A little mis misdirection. And we'll see Burden get the inbound. Of course, with two fouls, maybe that's to avoid a silly offensive foul being called on Robin or Stroud. But that ball is taken away, and now VCU has a chance to beat the buzzer. Jackson with the layup, and it's good! Two points for Zeb Jackson to close out the half on a turnover and a quick bucket and transition. And that is exactly what the doctor ordered for VCU. Totally the changes, with some momentum. Yeah, changes the atmosphere here at the single center completely. 34-28, Kennesaw State is ahead, though, as we close out the first half here from Richmond, Virginia. We'll be back after this break. VCU, and Ed, I'll go back to that question I asked you right before the break. Mike Rhodes to his Rams team in the locker room. Absolutely. He has to, he has to come, they have to come out with a lot of energy. They have to come out with uh, discipline on the defensive end. They have to run their offense crisply and fast so they, can, so they don't turn the ball over. They have to do everything they did in the first half but just sharper. They're not out of this game by a long shot. But they have to come out and punch uh, Kennesaw State in, in the mouth right now. Or, you know, it could be looking pretty glo uh, glo gloomy for, for DCU. And head coach Amir Abdul Rahim for Kennesaw State. Message to his team has got to be more of the same, guys. Just keep taking care of the ball. It's probably the only thing he'd like to see improve from the first half. Absolutely. Um, they made some uncharacteristic turnovers, or, and they allowed VCU to speed them up at times. But, however, they handled it very well. As you see, they have a six point lead. And they did very well from three. Start this second half. It's VCU's ball. We see Jackson. Find none, and now none feeds it inside to Deloach. Loach has it slapped away from him, couldn't get the basket to go. VCU does get the offensive rebound, and the putback by Kern is good. And Nick Kern getting to start this half is surprising to see. But that energy is something that VCU is going to need. Burton has the ball being guarded by none. Slapped out of bounds, and it will stay with Kennesaw State. I like the pressure by Jaden Nunn. And again, a six-point lead. It's already down to four. If VCU gets a stop, could cut it within a possession already here early in the second half. See Stroud driving inside. He's in trouble, trying to lob it up to Robinson, but there's a turnover. A little too tall for Robinson. And if VCU can get a score here, they can change the reflection of the game. Um, but they got to run some good offense. Let's get a good look. You saw Deloach not make it, but as you mentioned, that energy from Kern helping out VCU as he was able to get the offensive board in the putback. See Jackson get a screen from Deloach. Now he feeds it inside. It's slapped away from Deloach by Stroud. It will stay with VCU. So Kennesaw State quick hands defensively there to prevent an easy basket for Deloach. Absolutely. But good look by Jackson. Good offense ran by VCU. Just better defense that that moment. We're working around, it's none. Feeding it over to Jackson. There's Johns in the corner. Jackson gets a man to leave his feet. None's got to get a shot off quickly, and he won't. The shot clock goes off. It just seemed VCU did not know how much time was on the shot clock there. Why Passed not up a couple shots? Yeah, and I, I, I say this all the time. When you don't take the shot that your team expects you to take, it's just like a turnover. That was great ball movement. 
wide open shot at the top of the key. You got to step into it with confidence and knock it down. Well, Kern in foul trouble now here to start the second half as he picks up his third foul. Keep an eye on that. In fact, we'll see Vance Phillips head over to the scorer's table. Imagine that's going to be for Kern. Going inside, slapped away. A foul is called on Zeb Jackson. Does prevent an alley-oop for Robinson. And you got to take that foul. And that is, <laughs> as, as we hear from the fans yelling in the background, I was curious of that <laughs> because it's an alley-oop. It is an alley-oop play. However, is that considered shooting motion? I'm this pretty sure he'll live with that. Yeah, <laughs> this is with the first. Yeah, good foul <laughs> by Jackson. And we will see Kern step out after picking up that foul. However, it is going to be Banks that comes in for him. That free throw is in, so a late change there at the scorer's table. So Robinson, one of two from the line. Pushes the lead back out to five for Kennesaw State. Ball being thrown around. Deloach gets it. Deloach two hands slam to bring the fans here to their feet. Absolutely. Never giving up on a play. First two points of the game for Jalen Deloach. I tell you what, sometimes it's not going to look the prettiest, but you have to win in the best way you can. And these used attempting to do that. And that dunk did bring a roar from the crowd. They're trying to get into it now, but another foul is going to be called on Johns. That'll be his second. And just not a smart foul. You did your job. You, you, you pushed. You, you made him catch that a little by the three-point line. He's not a threat there. You just gotta let him catch that at that point in time. When you go reaching over the over the over the back. Another look here at Deloach, and again he just finally gets the ball into his hands and left no doubt with that <laughs> one. Lobbing it up, and Robinson with an alley oop over Deloach. That time, no foul. <laughs> Roach didn't want to pick up his third foul. Maybe he didn't recognize the alley-oop coming until it was too late to jump up in the air, but now we're seeing a different game officiated here in the second half. <laughs> Lots of fouls. Well, hopefully the, hopefully the refs let him play a little bit because I want to see both teams play their style of play. The foul was called on Rodgers, so it ends up being the second on Rodgers. That was a dangerous pass cut out by Zeb Jackson. Whistle and a foul underneath the basket. None made the practice three. <laughs> Let's see if we can carry that over into live action. Right. VCU could use it. Again, just one for ten from the three-point line so far. The foul was called on Youngblood. Picks up his second. Back inside to Jackson. He quickly moves it into the corner. None will miss the live three. And the rebound will go to Stroud. Absolutely. And you got to live with that shot. That's a, that's a great look, great pass. Just didn't execute on the shot. Three from Youngblood. No good. Rebound will go to Robinson. And Robinson gets the putback. And he is opposing his will on VCU's front court right now. Using his big body. 11 points for DeMond Robinson. Having a game. Jackson finds a three-ball corner. Good! Josh Banks, the junior from Charlotte. And now a whistle to, from the official as he wants to maybe an inadvertent whistle or trying to break something up there. It looks as if Robinson yeah. and Deloach got into it, and both coaches are like, hey, we are not going to do this right now. And the Loach and both Robinson will both come out. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's probably a wise decision by both coaches. They know that guys are in foul trouble already. They don't need their premier players to get in even more trouble. Right. For, Ken for Kennesaw State, Robinson is playing so well that you don't want to lose them. And these you just can't afford uh, to lose their starting four. 
Jennings with the ball. He'll bring the ball up the floor, being guarded tightly by Zeb Jackson. Jackson's hanging right there on his hip pocket. We'll get over to Peterson. Now Rodgers runs around his defender looking for a pass into the corner. It's taken away by Banks, who's making his presence known here early in the second half. None. Going inside, pulls up from just beyond the free throw line. And down another jumper. That's 14. what he does. And it all started with Josh Banks' effort on the defensive end. And that's what VCU has to do. They have to create havoc in the half court. Two-point game. The Seagull Senator gets a little louder, almost a steal there for Fermin. See Burden pull it back out, going inside. Peterson's runner will fall. Very contested by Christian Fermin, but does get it to go in. And now the game is starting to pick up the intensity. Both teams are starting to find their groove in the half, in the half court. DCU trying to get busy here as in the second half they are trailing. We'll have another blocking foul call. That will send the Rams. Won't send them to the line yet. Just the third team foul. That foul called on Jennings is his third. And that was a that was a really close one to be in a charge as well. And that foul means that 41-37. Kennesaw State is ahead. We'll step aside. We'll be back here with more college basketball after the break. All right, back here, VCU and Kennesaw State. 41-37, the Owls ahead. They've led the entire way so far. The VCU has made four of their last five from the field. They're going to be looking to try to get something here off an inbound underneath the basket after Jennings picked up his third foul. Absolutely, and they're finding rhythm offensively, but they're also finding the rhythm defensively as well. Um, they're applying way more pressure uh, this half than the uh, first half in totality uh, on the perimeter. Look at Striver. Oh, uh, he's going to pick up the call. offensive foul. I think what the official saw there was him kind of lean that elbow in a little bit, Ed. Yeah, absolutely. However, that may just be because he's taller. <laughs> Burton's so much shorter. <laughs> I think you're right. Jennings gets the inbound. The foul on Schreiber is his second. Still a four-point game. Kennesaw State looking to extend their lead. Lots of contact. That foul is going to be called on Nunn. And that'll be the second on Jaden Nunn. And he's trying to fight through that screen because Kennesaw State has, has, has had so much success with that handoff. Driving in the paint, getting the defense to con contract, and kicking out to that corner. Burden receives the inbound. He's contributed in a big way, adding six points so far. Get that feed moving toward the corner. Now finds Jennings on the near wing. Moving toward the basket. Gets it just in ahead of the shot clock. Two big points for Kennesaw State's Case and Jennings. Absolutely. VC played great defense for 29 seconds. <laughs> See here what VCU has to offer. Kennesaw State's now made their last three shots from the field. Turnover taken away by Terrell Burden. He'll go into the basket and, and get the foul. Eight points for Terrell Burden, the senior from Smyrna, Georgia. Huge, huge basket there on the steal as well. And I'm not sure what Furman was attempting to do there on the offensive end, but in the words of TLC, don't go chasing waterfalls. Stick to the rivers and the lakes that you're used to. <laughs> do what you do. Don't get outside of yourself. Zeb Jackson <laughs> picks up his first personal. 45-37. This is the free throw. Banks pulls in the rebound. Wherever you are on this Thanksgiving weekend, we hope you're having a great time as you get a little TLC reference. Probably you weren't <laughs> expecting. Jackson 
He's moving toward the middle. Picks up his dribble, now has to find help. He'll find it in the form of Shriver. Feeds it inside to Deloach. Whistle, and we're going to have a foul underneath the basket. And here's what I would like for Deloach to do. He needs to minimize his dribbles and go into a shot as quickly as possible. His assist ratio is 18 to 3 right now. Actually, it's probably 19 to 3 right now. And that is just not good. He has to get into his shot a little bit faster. 6 0 run over the last two minutes. And we'll have a turnover. Mike Rhodes saying that he was pushed out of bounds, but the official disagreeing. So it is a turnover. And Kennesaw State, who's on a 6 0 run, has that lead. 45-37 right now, back out to an eight-point advantage for the Owls. Largest lead of the day has been nine for Kennesaw State. That one is slapped away by Deloach, but Burden didn't pull the trigger quick enough when he was looking for Peterson. Stroud on the wing. Misses, but they get the rebound. Deloach return to Cinder. Out of bounds. Absolutely. Way to save that play, because that could have been a heartbreaker. I was getting ready to say it seemed too easy for that offensive rebound, but then <laughs> Deloach was not making it too easy for the putback. Young blood had that one blocked, and maybe he'll think twice next time down low next to Deloach, but we'll have to see. Young blood, a very good player, usually making his mark known, though, from the perimeter. We'll see Jennings drive in. He's blocked. Ball still loose, still being fought for. Young blood comes away with it. He'll put up a shot with a hand in his face. That one is short, and it's out of bounds. It'll go to VCU. Great defense by the freshman, Fats Billups. Able to contest at the end and get his hands get his hands on the ball. So Fats Billups, no stranger to the Richmond natives here in the crowd. No stranger to this court. Won a state championship last year on this court. Of course, that was with Verina High School, and now a member of the VCU Rams, a team he probably saw growing up here at the Siegel Center a few times. None over to Fats Phillips. Jackson feeding it inside to Deloach. Deloach battling down low. Turn around, comes up short. And that is a gimme. You have to hit that shot. Stroud will feed it over to Burden. Into the corner, Youngblood three. Off the rim and no good. It's out of bounds and a turnover. Defensive fundamentals are very important. VCU got bailed out by a missed shot by Youngblood. But Fast Billups completely took himself out of the play by reaching with the wrong hand. Fundamentals, baby. Got to follow the fundamentals. None wants to see what he can get going here from the point guard position this time. Jackson inside to Johns. Johns had some space there at the A-10 logo. Maybe surprised to see that space. He hasn't had much tonight. Misses the first attempt. Fouled on the putback attempt, so he'll go to line for two. And when Kennesaw State goes to that zone, they have to, BCU has to put somebody in that middle, and they have to be able to go to work either for themselves or for the teammates. All right, we'll be back with more college basketball after this. And here is our Virginia Credit Union assist of the game. Jackson with a strong drive baseline. Passing it out to Josh Banks for the three. And DC is going to need a lot more of that to, to pull this deficit closer. And Banks with a huge three for VCU, making that the Virginia Credit Union assist of the game. With every VCU assist, Virginia Credit Union makes a donation to the Children's Hospital of Richmond at VCU. The Rams have four assists so far in this one. So Virginia Credit Union making four different donations to that Children's Hospital here at VCU so far. VCU hoping to get a few more assists, as you said, Ed, if we're going to come back in this one. Currently down 45-37 to 37 to Kennesaw State. Absolutely. Uh and to be, to be completely honest, I do believe that these should, like if they want to win this game, they're going to have to move the ball better. They're going to have to create for each other. And I hate to beat a dead horse, but this is what Ace Baldwin brought to the team.
Free throw is good. The foul was called on Peterson. That was his fourth. So he has checked out for Kennesaw State. Johns makes his second. Nothing but nylon. Gives him six for the grad transfer from Michigan. Of course, the Wolverines had a big win today over their rival Ohio State on the gridiron. Rodgers moving toward that corner. We'll pull it back out. Kennesaw State will draw a foul. That one's going to be called on Fats Billups. And that's going to be one and one. Kennesaw State going to the line. And we will see Adam McCoya go to the line. Quincy Adam McConia, a junior from Bloomington, Indiana. Not on the score sheet yet, but We'll get a first attempt here at the line. And he will miss the front end of that one and one. And it goes to Deloach. Going to start back to this zone. Three from the corner. Almost in, but rattles out. VCU will get the offensive board, though. So Billups just short of maybe blowing the roof off of the Seagull Center with that three. And now a foul is going to be called on Deloach underneath the basket. Again, that was with him tangled up with Robinson. <laughs> Might be a theme for the final one. <laughs> and you got to give Deloach some credit for uh, fighting so hard to get that extra possession. But you have to be smarter and not pick up that offensive foul right there. Walk. Stroud into the corner. Three. No in good. Robinson with the board. Put back. No. Stroud gets it. A third attempt. No. This time it's pulled in by Nunn. Nunn working quickly. Runs right by Cottle. And he fouls on and gets the basket. 16 points for Jaden Nunn. And when you're struggling from behind the arc, it helps to potentially get three <laughs> when you get fouled down low. Ed. Absolutely. Great job by Jaden Nunn by pushing the pace. Getting in there, being strong enough to take that contact and still get the finish. And this is the type, the type of the type of play that you expect from Jaden Nunn, especially that ace ball was out of the game. You expect Jaden Nunn, being that he's the most experienced guard on this team, to come out and perform like this. Oof. Rims out on the free throw. The foul was called on Spencer Rogers, so he picked up his third. Still can't buy a three, huh? Nope, can't buy a three. <laughs> the old-fashioned way or the new way as there's a three that will be good. That one belongs to Simeon Cottle, the freshman from College Park, Georgia. <laughs> Bubba Sparks, College Park. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, works it to none. <laughs> Full of musical references today is Ed Nixon. Going inside to Deloach. Back to Johns. Johns now moving inside. We'll kick it back out to Banks. Had to take a second to gather in the pass, so couldn't take the three. Now Deloach fade away up and over Robinson. And Deloach has put a lot of work in this offseason on catching and finishing in the post. And it's just, just now that we're able to see some of the, the fruits from that labor. Stroud thinking about it, but decides to go to Robinson. Doing a good job trying to take away Rodgers. None slaps away an entry pass. Absolutely. And what VC is doing a, an exceptional job of now is putting pressure on the ball. Not giving Kennesaw State the opportunity to just look and observe the defense and pick them apart. They're, they're applying pressure to the ball, which is making it a little bit more difficult for Kennesaw to run their offense. Toby Lawall will be the man that is tasked with trying to slow down DeMond Robinson now. Switches to guard Stroud. Go to Johns. Made away shot. Not good, but it's off of Johns and out of bounds. Possession stays with Kennesaw State. But if you're VCU, that's kind of the shot you want from Robinson. Away from the basket, fading away. Absolutely. He has had so much success today using his physicality. And if he wants to shoot 15-foot fadeaways like he's KD, be my guess. Well, Kennesaw State just one of their last ten from the field, but they still hold on to this five-point lead, and that's been because VCU has also struggled from the field, Ed. Absolutely. Now, 
Kennesaw State is doing a good job of mixing up their defenses, keeping VCU all, VCU all balanced. However, VCU has got some good open looks. They just have to knock them down. See Jennings, he's running into trouble underneath the basket, couldn't get it. Put back attempt is good this time from DeMond Robinson as he picks up 13 points here. Again, his physicality has been has been one of the major factors to this game. Jackson on the wing. He's going to move toward the baseline. Picks up his dribble. Will find Shriver. Shriver. Strong. Too strong. And it's off the mark. Whistle and, and a, a foul, foul on Shriver. And Kennesaw State will walk to the line for a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. Actually... I think they're in a double bonus. Now, that'll be nine, so the next oh, okay. one will be double bonus. But it is a one and one here, but sends Terrell Burden to the line. I believe he's shooting 88% from the free throw line. <laughs> 0 for 1 so far today, but you're right. A very good free throw shooter for this Kennesaw State team. One of the rare good free throw shooters. As we mentioned, both teams have struggled from the line as a whole. They'll make the first one here. Gives Burden nine. One more would put him in double figures. Burden's second free throw is up. Off the back iron, and it is pulled in by Toby LaWall. Did you see? <laughs> from he from London <laughs> has ups, yeah. <laughs> Banks gets it over to Jackson. Jackson trying to dribble through a double team will be fouled. Now the question is, who does that foul get called on? It looks like it's going to be on DeMond Robinson. Just his second. With that being his second, we'll see Lawal check out. Banks checks out. Nunn and DeLoach come back in. And free throws in the second half are going to be very important because both teams are already in the penalty with eight minutes to go. Four points for Zeb Jackson, and he will make the second. So now he has five points. Junior from Toledo, Ohio, trying to contribute and pull the Rams back. 45 points for VCU now. Still trailing by six to Kennesaw State, though. Robinson with the handoff to Burden. The Owls driving baseline will have a whistle underneath the back. Oh, bounds. no, he's out of bounds. Unfortunate for Kennesaw State because he had a, a pretty good look at, at the basket right there. He did, and the way Deloach was looking up when he heard the whistle, I thought he was about <laughs> to be called for his fourth foul, but the official said he stepped out of bounds, so it will be a turnover. And Deloach stays on three fouls, which is good for VCU because with eight minutes to go, they want to keep him in as long as they can. That pass, though, smacked away by Jennings. And now Jennings has to check up, looks for Stroud. The ball bounces away and will go back to VCU. So after the turnover, they live to tell the tale. We'll take a break. It's 51-45, Kennesaw State ahead of VCU. Back here at the Siegel Center, Kennesaw State with the lead, 51-45 on VCU. And, Ed, we were talking in the break, VCU doing well defensively. They're playing tight. They're forcing a lot of misses. Kennesaw State only two of their last 12 from the field. That does bring their goal percentage still 42%. Pretty good day at the office. But they've got to start getting baskets. And the question becomes, where do you go? I mean, none has the lion's share of the points at 16. It's been getting him help, though. Absolutely. If you look down the list, I don't, I'm not sure where Jameer Watkins is, if he hurt himself or, or what's going on, but he's not in the game right now. He's only played five minutes this game, and he's probably the second leading scorer on his team. So that's something we got to figure out what's going on. Um, but the low two for five. Brandon Johns, one for three. Zev Jackson, one for five. Da David Shriver, one for five. You know, somebody else has to help none out. Jackson will get it back to none. On your plus minus there. None really a key player as well. One of the few that's only minus two. And now Deloach feeds it inside to Jackson. Beautiful move underneath the basket. And he'll have seven. 
Good pass by Deloach. Good cut by Zeb Jackson. Easy two. Back within four. This is the closest VCU has been able to get is four points in the second half. Robinson has it. Robinson and Deloach have been having their own personal battle down low all day. Stroud will kick it to the corner. Three ball. Ooh. Rattles home. Looked like it was about to come out, but Kaysen Jennings has been living well, apparently, as he gets that one to go back <laughs> in. Ten for him now. None. Over to Deloach. VCU trying to find an answer. Back down seven. Swing the ball around the perimeter. None in trouble. Tipped. And possession will stay with VCU, but only five seconds on that shot clock. Now, this has been a waste of possession, if you ask me. They had no aggressiveness going towards the back. They're just swinging the ball around the perimeter. And now you got yourself in a situation where you're going to have to find something very, very quick. They do find none. Can none get space for a shot? He'll pull up for three, hand in his face, and nails it. Well, Jaden Nunn playing well above his Stevenson average of eight points. He has a huge number at 19 so far. Right. And if it's NIL, that's that's why you make the big bucks. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Kennesaw State will inbound. It's a four-point game again. Question is, can VCU trim it closer than four and possibly even get their first lead of the day? Burden runs past none, kicks it into the corner. Jennings moving, runner from the baseline falls. Great patience by Jennings right there. Pump fake, one dribble, easy floater. He's above his season average as well. He's got 12 so far. Jackson wants to move toward the baseline himself. Trying to find Deloach, but it's slapped away, and it goes to Stroud. I'm not sure if that was, strapped, uh, if that was slapped away. Whistle. Or if Deloach wasn't just suspecting that pass. But that's a good look. You got to be ready. Foul called on none. That's his third. With 540 to go. Two free throws the rest of the way for the Owls. That will send Alex Peterson to the line. He's got just two points so far. Again, off the mark. Seems like a good foul. And off the mark, he comes up short. Second free throw will fall for Peterson. As we get ready to play out the rest of this ball game right now, VCU is down seven. You have to go go to the mismatch. Jackson looking for help. Shot clock winding down. None. Hits another three. Well, we said they needed to start making threes, and who else but Jaden Nunn today? He answered the call. 57-53, it's a four-point game. We'll be back with more after this. Take a look here as Jaden Nunn has kind of solo by himself Will VCU back into this game, Ed. Absolutely. As we look at this replay, we see Zeb Jackson penetrating the defense, pump faking, and finding Jay Nunn on the opposite side of the court for an easy catch and shoot. He was able to knock it down that time. VCU need more of that. The sophomore from Flint, Michigan, with 22 points. Take a look at him there. He is would love some help in the comeback here. He's got 22. No other VCU Ram is in double figures. The closest would be Zeb Jackson at seven. Have to see here as this game continues to unfold. If VCU can finally get their first lead of the ball game. They've trimmed it back down to four. Been as close as they've been able to get here in the second half. Absolutely. And it's going to start on the defensive end. And VCU uh, brings in Nick Kern again to bring that energy defensively. Long throw across the floor. Does find Burden. And now over to Stroud. 
Stroud, who went into double figures in the first half, has not scored here in the second half. But Kennesaw State's been able to maintain their lead without him scoring. Shot clock winding down, slapped away by Deloach. It'll be a shot clock violation as Deloach went up and got another block, this time on Alex Peterson. Absolutely. Deloach is making his presence felt on the defensive end. And again, if VC wants to have some success and a chance to take this lead, it's going to start defensively. The crowd starting to get more into this one here in Richmond. Deloach looking. Hands off to Kern. Kern going to the basket. Kicks it to Johns. Johns misses the three in the corner. Youngblood with the rebound. That was a good shot, but at that at that juncture, I, I think DC wanted a great shot. Move the ball a little bit more, penetrate, get an easy shot. Burden to Stroud. Back over to Burden. He's being guarded by Nunn. Burden wants to make a run to the basket. Couldn't get it to go. The tip in is too strong. Another attempt, no. Tipped all the way out to Stroud. Peterson slow to get up, but is up. Now Stroud driving to the basket, loses his footing, and that one is going to be a turnover. Step aside here again for the Seagull Center, 57-53, Kennesaw State. Joe Deck and Ed Nixon with you here from VCU as the Rams will look to make this a one-possession game for the first time here in the second half, Ed. Absolutely. They're doing a great job of bringing the intensity on the defensive end. Now they just have to converge on taking those turnovers that Kansas State, Kansas State is making and, put, and turn it into points. And the turnover on that last possession was the 14th turnover of the ball game for Kansas State. VCU has 13. And right now... You're looking for advantages that VCU has, maybe on fast breaks, 8-5. to five, Obviously not going to be a thing out of the timeout here, but VCU would love to get this to a one-possession game. And Kennesaw came out in that 2-2-1 press just to slow VCU down a little bit. Sam Jackson moving to the top. Over to Johns now in the corner. And we will have a whistle and a foul call. And so Josh Banks goes to the line. Big free throws on the way for Josh Banks. The foul on Youngblood will be his third. He's been held silent in the second half as well. Absolutely. I, I, I got to give VCU credit. They have up the ante when it comes to the defensive end. Banks makes the first free throw. And what a cool kid he is. Now, see, <laughs> well, these are big free throws. He walks up there like it's nothing. Three-point game. Chance to get it to two. It is good from the junior from Charlotte, North Carolina. It's a two-point game for the first time here in the second half, and the crowd here at the Siegel Center gets on their feet. They want to roll VCU to a comeback. They're trying to bring the havoc themselves. Absolutely. Turn on Jennings. Take and it away. Poked out of bounds. Oh. oh and it will go to Kennesaw State. The official says it goes off of the knee of Nick Kern. Great hands. Was that Youngblood? I think it was Youngblood poking that away. Great huge, hand. Huge, huge, huge play, play from him. Huge play. Burden has it now. The crowd turning up the volume again here in Richmond, Virginia. Burden goes inside. Deloach on Robinson. Kicks it out to Stroud. Burden sees Youngblood fall. Waits for him to get up. Shot clock is winding down. That's the shot clock violation. The crowd so loud that Burden couldn't hear it. Coach Amir Abdul Rahim asking if the shot clock was reset. The officials saying yes, it was. <laughs> But that's the effect that you have when you're at a home game, especially when you have an atmosphere like VCU's. I like that. Sometimes you get the crowd, they try to run the shot clock early, but if you don't do it at all, the player's maybe not <laughs> paying attention to it. Cerebral from the fans here at the Seagull Center. Zeb Jackson dancing through the defense, goes up, no whistle. 
Just find the lurch. Put back. No. Take a tag. Yeah. MVPU is tied for the first time on the day. Now, this possession is going to be important for Kansas State. Not to be forced. Not to be forceful. Stroud feeds Robinson. Goes up. Gets it to the Good block. Good with the board. VCU looking for their first lead. Just mentioned they're tied for the first time after that last basket. Banks directing traffic. Finds Johns. Now Jackson. None. Foul by Youngblood. That's four on Chris Youngblood. And that is not good for, for Kennesaw State. They're going to need him down the stretch. And if I'm VCU, from here on out, I'm putting him in every single pick and roll and taking Kennesaw State leading scorer out of this game. Take another look at that block. As they found Robinson, thought they were going to get two easy ones, but Johns. Great effort, great contest, and great rebound by Deloach. <laughs> he snagged that one. <laughs> we'll see none head to the line. He is 6 for 10 from the line today. Rattles home the first. The Rams with their first lead of the day. 23 points to match the number on his jersey. Nothing but the bottom of the net for Jaden Nunn again. And the sophomore from Flint, Michigan has put VCU out front. It's a 10-0 run for the Rams. Now they have to stay solid here. Great play. Youngblood from the A-10 logo knocks Great it down. Play. Whistle and a timeout called by Coach Amir Abdul Rahim for Kennesaw State. A big basket for Chris Youngblood. He has nine. And you didn't wonder with a 10-0 run. They're behind for the first time all day. How would Kennesaw State respond? They go to their best player, Chris Youngblood. Absolutely, and that was just a, a well-ran play by Kennesaw State. Uh, good screen by Robinson to get young blood free with a little bitty mini jumper at the A-10 logo. Now, I'm still concerned. Where, where is Jameer Watkins? Now, we, we don't know. He, he has not played since early in the ball game. You mentioned only played for about five minutes, just under six minutes in this game. I haven't seen him since early in the first half. A player who averages 11. They're already missing Ace Baldwin, who averages 12 per game. It's two big players for VCU that have not been in today's game. Other than short of five minutes for Watkins. Absolutely. Right now, VCU is tied, looking for a huge win here at home after trailing for almost the entire day. Absolutely. Here at Kennesaw State with the press. And again, they don't usually press or trap out of this press. They just want to slow the slow the clock, make you waste some time. None to Jackson. Jackson feeds it inside to Johns. Johns with a two-hand slam! Eight points for Brandon Johns! Ball is loose, out of bounds. Possession will stay with the Owls. A great find by Zeb Jack. He has shown in multiple plays that he has a good knack for finding the open man. Nick Kern checks back into the game. Four assists for Zeb Jackson, and we gave him the Virginia Credit Union assist of the game earlier, but that one might be bigger. <laughs> Absolutely. Over to Jennings. Jennings trying to create some space. Being double teamed. Will find Stroud. Still a two-point game. Very much hangs in the balance here in the final minute. Jennings to Youngblood. Youngblood going inside to Robinson. Robinson has played a large role today. Turnaround shot. Too strong. Deloach couldn't quite get the board. It's loose. He has it now. And a foul, foul. is called on Stroud. That's three for Brandon Stroud. And that's going to be the tenth foul. Well, Kennesaw State. It is the 10th team foul, so two free throws for both sides from here on out. Jalen Deloach heads to the line. Now, this is an exciting game. And this is what we, we expected out of this game. A lot of up and back, back and forth.
Kern tying his shoe. That's the delay we have right now for Deloach, who's got his first free throws of the day. You're right. We were expecting a back-and-forth game. What we had was Kennesaw State jumping out to a huge lead, kind of holding on to that lead. Double digits at points. Or not, excuse me, got up to as far as nine, hanging around that seven to six margin for most of the day. But VCU has gotten the lead here and has a chance to extend. Deloach misses the first free throw, another one on the way. And that looked like a knuckleball. Another free throw on the way for Deloach. The official reminding Terrell Bird in here behind us that he's got to stay behind that three-point arc. Deloach misses two free throws. Well, neither team has been solid from the line all year. It will be interesting to see how big of a role that plays. The crowd back on their feet. Burden moving to the corner. Pump fake from Jennings. Leaping up for Stroud. Wow. Rattles home. A tough shot that was Great. heavily contested. Heavily contested. Great finish by Robinson. 15 points for DeMond Robinson. The senior from Montgomery, Alabama, ties it up. Under 30 seconds to go. None for Jackson. Jackson. The Loach well outside. Now finds Kern. Kern stops. Puts up a runner. No, the Loach couldn't get the put back. Shot clock is off, but a foul is called. On Stroud, that's four. Stroud can't believe it. Now this is going to... These are huge free throws for Nick Kern. Take a look at it here. Kennesaw State unhappy. It looked like the ball was loose maybe, but we'll have another timeout by Kennesaw State. 16 seconds to go. 61-61. Three throws coming for VCU in the final 16 seconds. A team that has shot... 21 of 29 from the line so far, and these are going to be big free throws here as we take another look at it. The miss, Deloach couldn't get the put back. Kern has uh, it, yes, and he is yes, grabbed there yes. on the arm by Stroud. Yes. Now, I'm not actually sure why he reacted that way, because he, he possibly could have picked up a tech right there, but you did foul him. So, I mean, the refs got it right that time. Kern heading to the line for the first time today. Right now, this is going to be a huge, huge moment for VCU. They need these points. Absolutely. And you got to give credit to Nick Kern fighting so hard to get in position to get that rebound. He has a knack for the ball, and I'm glad that he's starting to play with so much with that energy and that enthusiasm that he played with last year, and it's great to see it come out today. Kern, who's heading the line. Only two free throws this year. He's 0 for 2 from the line so far. Ooh. No time like the present to make your first free throw of the year if you're Nick Kern. And if I'm BCU, I really need both. Yes. Because you don't want to go down. Ken Kennesaw State has so many different shooters and so many different scoring options that you really don't want to have. That you don't want to give them the opportunity where they can get a 2 or a 3 to win the game. Three players in double figures. Their best player, Chris Youngblood, hovering just outside of double figures at nine points. Yeah, you're right. Lots of options. You don't want to give Kennesaw State a chance to win it with just a two. Kern misses the first. Another one coming. DCU crowd trying to encourage him here. Kern's second free throw is up. That Knocks one is down. good. So VCU with the lead. Five points for Nick Kern. They got to play tight defense here. Final 16 seconds. It's a one-point game for VCU. They find Robinson. Robinson turns around, finds Burden. Burden goes up. No. Deloach with the board. It's loose. Pulled in by Jackson. He's fouled. Wow. Wow. Jackson will go to the line. The foul is on Youngblood, and that's five for Chris Youngblood. Wow. What a contest by Deloach. Well, we saw Deloach and Robinson get into it. Deloach has been very physical today. This time, he's got to be physical on Burden. Here we go. Oh, Brandon Johns. Johns first. Great job staying. Great job staying vertical. Great job staying vertical. That easily could have been called the foul. He just brought his hands down or just brought him over. But he did a good job staying vertical, forcing Burton into a tough shot where he couldn't finish. Deloach came in, finished the play up with a strong rebound. As we were saying there, yeah, Deloach coming in, being very physical, grabbing that board. And LaRue will come in. It's
It's Cole LaRue, a junior from Mobile, Alabama, his first appearance today. As he comes in for Youngblood, it looks like Johns maybe got bopped on the nose when he was going up to contest Terrell Burden's shot. Burden, another player just outside double figures, couldn't get that to go in. It puts Zeb Jackson at the line, and this is an opportunity for VC as we take another look at this huge stop that might end up winning the game. Great job. Great job. Now, I've seen some refs call that a foul before, but I'm glad it, was, I'm glad it wasn't because that, that was great defense. And it's a good thing that VCU has Zeb Jackson at the free throw line. He has been in this position before where he had to, he had to ice the game with free throws. Let's see if he can do it again. 14 of 16 on the year, 87 and a half. He is the best free throw shooter on this VCU team this season. It is exactly who they would choose to have at the line in this situation. If he makes both, barring a foul on a three-point shot, VCU can't lose. But he's got to make both. He's got to make both. 1.7 on the clock. Two seconds. That's a lot of time. But well, at least it's time to get, get you a prayer up. First free throw is good for Zeb Jackson. Gives him eight. And the junior transfer from Michigan. Hometown of Toledo, Ohio. Has a chance to put the Rams up three. Good. Nine points for Zeb Jackson. And he knocks down free throws in these moments as if they're layups. What a luxury to have a guy like that on your team. Four for five from the line today. Long pass is tipped. Caught by Jackson. And the Rams didn't lead until late. But they bring home the win here at the Siegel Center over the Owls of Kennesaw State. What a great game by both teams. Both teams played super hard. Kennesaw, Kennesaw State led for the majority of the game, and DCU's relentlessness found their way to win this game and pull it out.